If I told you the world was about to end, what image comes to mind? Like what, what scene do you imagine when you hear the world is ending? This is something that is relevant throughout every type of media, books, movies, video games, TV shows. Everybody has had some type of a thought about how the world will end. Well, today I'm doing another iceberg and this is actually the end of the world iceberg. So we're gonna be going from basically the sky, which is general ideas about how the world could end, like nuclear war, stuff that you hear all the time, all the way down to the bottom depths, which have ideas that not only have I never heard of until then, basically just some weird ideas in general. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with an iceberg, basically how it is, is it's tiered out. So top tier is basically more well-known things. Um, that'll be the sky. That'll be stuff that everybody knows, general information. And as we kind of move down in the iceberg, it gets more and more obscure, more weird, more or less relevant is what I would say. So if you guys are new here, I've done a bunch of other iceberg videos. I'll link some of them up here because I, I usually break them down into different parts. This one, I figured I'm just going to give you the whole thing all at once. If you end up liking these, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And yeah. Also, a few of these I could not find any information for. So some of these are just off the top of my head. I'm, I'm kind of interpreting them in my own way. But if you feel a different way about it, let me know down below in the comments because, you know, what I mean, my mind could be changed on how some of these kind of are perceived. nuclear warfare this is something that's basically self-explanatory constant fear in today's world at this point because a ton of countries do have nukes so i guess it is a possibility but i don't know i guess i'm not really that worried about it if nukes hit the planet fuck it man i'm not really expecting too much out of me so you know it is what it is at that point sun death eventually the fuel of the sun which is hydrogen will end up running out and when this happens basically the sun will begin to die but don't worry this should happen like basically five billion years from now we're all going to be gone and after the hydrogen runs out there will actually be a period of about two to three billion years where the sun is like slowly dying going through star death and yeah basically everything in the universe will freeze and we won't have nothing to worry about no more we're already going to be gone hundreds and billions of years at this point you know so i'm not too worried about this uh, anybody that's going to be around for that sorry that sucks to be you the deep impact event basically like a giant meteor or a giant asteroid crashes into the planet basically killing everything almost like with the dinosaurs when that meteorite struck and killed them all so same thing a pandemic even though covid was horrible nowhere near as bad as like the spanish flu or the bubonic plague something like that is more on par with what it is those killed percentages of the planet you know percentages of the entire population of humanity so those are more what they're kind of getting at for those ones so a giant black hole is a region of space time where gravity is so strong that nothing including light and other electromagnetic waves are able to basically escape it and if this happened near us, basically it would just suck everything in and nobody really knows what happens at the other side of a black hole. Could be anything at this point. Use your imagination, but I'm assuming it wouldn't be good. So I'm trying to avoid that if possible. The super solar flare. A super solar flare is a brief eruption of intense high energy radiation from the sun's surface associated with sunspots and causing electromagnetic disturbances on Earth. As with radio frequency communications and other power line transmissions, basically if a super solar flare happened, they're basically thinking that it might burn up our atmosphere or set our atmosphere on fire. It is it is some weird science where basically we catch the hydrogen and the oxygen on fire if it actually reached us. Um, I don't think it's gonna happen. I'm not really too worried about that. Fuck it, if the sun explodes, cause like, it is what it is. I don't know, I'm not gonna stop that. I can't, how the fuck are we gonna stop that, you know? So I'm not too worried about that. Megafauna. In zoology, megafauna are large animals. The most common thresholds to be a megafauna are weighing over 100 pounds or weighing over a ton, which is 2,000 pounds. You can think of back in the dinosaur age where a lot of animals that we recognize now used to be a much bigger size. 
um really i don't see these being much of an issue unless it's like giant tigers giant bears something that already kills us and eats us then we would have an issue but other than that i mean i think that would be kind of sick you know what i mean imagine having like some giant ass bunnies running around it might be a little terrifying at first but i think it would be dope gray goose scenario Grey Goo is a hypothetical, global, catastrophic scenario involving molecular nanotechnology in which it out of control, self replicating machines consume all biomass and perhaps also everything else on Earth while building many more of themselves. A scenario that has been called ecophagy, which is the consumption of an ecosystem. The original idea assumed machines were designed to have this capability, while popularizations have assumed that machines might somehow gain this capability by accident. Self-replicating machines of the macroscopic variety were originally described by mathematician John von Neumann and sometimes referred to as von Neumann machines or clanking replicators. The term gray goo was coined by nanotechnology pioneer K. Eric Drexler in his 1986 book of Engineers of Creations. And in 2004, he stated, I wish I had never used the term gray goo. Zombie Apocalypse We've all seen a million zombie movies by this time, played zombie games. It's pretty self-explanatory. I honestly think this would be pretty dope, although I don't really think I survive. I have a delusion that I would survive and I would come out of this, but in reality, I don't know, cause I might get ran up on by like 30 of them and I'm done for it. At that point, I'm just, you know, I'm, uh, I'm gonna see myself later at that point, cause I'm not getting into no zombie stuff. I'm not, I'm not doing that. The Rogue Planet. A rogue planet, also known as a free-floating planet, or an isolated planetary mass object, is an interstellar object of planetary mass which is not gravitationally bound to any star or dwarf. Rogue planets may originate from planetary systems in which they are formed and later ejected. Bye, have a great time! Or they can also form on their own just outside of a planetary system. Basically, the main concern for this would be something the size of a planet free floating not attached to any like other planets gravitational pull and just slamming into us and definitely probably breaking apart our planet at that point we would be fucked for lack of better words gamma ray bursts in gamma ray astronomy gamma ray bursts are immensely energetic explosions that have been observed in distant galaxies described by nasa as the most powerful class of explosions in the entire universe they are the most energetic and luminous electromagnetic events since the Big Bang. Bursts can last from 10 milliseconds to several hours. After an initial blast of gamma rays, a longer lived afterglow is usually emitted at longer wavelengths. And basically if a gamma ray ended up hitting Earth, it would end up setting our atmosphere on fire, basically just burning the entire planet. It would be fucking trash. That would be horrible. an AI revolution. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty similar to Detroit Become Human, that basically AI is revolting, plus they're already smarter than us, they're connected to the internet, nobody knows everything, but an AI could know everything. At least everything that is out there, you know? So, I don't know, that's pretty scary, and hey, maybe one day, we're getting pretty close, you know? Sometimes I can't even tell the difference between an AI video or a real video, so we're getting pretty close to that sketchy area. The Rapture. The rapture in Christianity is the belief that both the living and dead believers will ascend into heaven to meet Jesus Christ at the second coming. Um, I've seen this in movies, I've seen this in TV shows, I, I understand the concept, basically everybody floating up into heaven. Um, that would be fucking crazy to see. As somebody who doesn't really believe in any real religion, um, that would be insane, bro. I would be like, holy shit, hey, good for them, because they, they got it. But anyways, moving on to the next one. That was pretty self-explanatory. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, like me, you don't really get it, but. Simulation shutdown. This is the belief that basically we are in a simulation if this is a simulation, which myself, hey, some days I could be convinced that this is a simulation, bro. Too much weird stuff happens in the real world for it to not be, I don't know, set up some way. But anyways, if you're somebody that believes in that, this is the belief that the simulation just shuts off one day, basically. You, you would never know it. Everything would just shut off. You would have no knowledge of anything that ever happened basically after that. and everything just ends like that blink of an eye gone which is pretty scary um although at the end of the day like fuck it if that happens what are you gonna do about it nothing up next is the big freeze 
Also known as the heat death of the universe, this is a hypothesis of the ultimate fate of the universe, which suggests the universe will evolve to a state of no thermodynamic free energy and will therefore be unable to sustain processes that increase entropy. Heat death does not imply any particular absolute temperature, it only requires that the temperature differences or other processes may no longer be exploited to perform work. In the language of physics, this is when the universe reaches the thermodynamic equilibrium. Basically, no more heat, everything would slowly cool off, uh, there is no more thermodynamic energy which means we're no longer getting energy from the sun, and basically everything would slowly freeze and die. Pretty horrible, uh, I would say probably like almost like an ice age but worse because this would be universe wide you know not just planet wide the big rip the existence of phantom energy could cause the expansion of the universe to accelerate so quickly that a scenario known as the big rip a possible end to the universe occurs the expansion of the universe reaches an infinite degree in finite time causing expansion to accelerate without bounds this acceleration necessarily passes the speed of light since it involves expansion of the universe itself and not particles moving within it, causing more and more objects to leave our observable universe faster than its expansion. As light and information emitted from the distant stars and other cosmic sources cannot catch up with this expansion, as the observable universe expands, objects will basically be unable to interact with each other via fundamental forces, and eventually the expansion will prevent any actions of forces between any particles. Even within atoms, ripping apart the universe, making distances between individual particles limitless. Basically, imagine all of your atoms, every atom that is in existence, just going away from each other. Like, we are just amalgamations of tons of clumps of atoms all put together, you know, that's everything. So if all those atoms cannot touch anymore, what do you think happens? Basically, your whole body, every particle in you rips apart, rips away from each other as fast as basically the speed of light, which technically would be faster than that. It's a whole lot of science mumbo jumbo that I'm not 100% sure on, but imagine your particles just ripping off of every single thing. That's, that's pretty scary. The strangle it. A stranglet is a hypothetical particle consisting of a bound state of rough equal numbers up and down in strange quarks. An equivalent description is that a stranglet is a small fragment of strange matter small enough to be considered a particle. It has been suggested that stranglets of subplanetary or heavy meteorite mass would puncture planets and other sy uh, solar system objects. And the main concern for this one is that it could be used as a bomb of some sort once they get the technology right like this is a particle that could basically blast through a planet itself if it was going fast enough so in my mind this is definitely going to be used as a bomb at some point once the technology gets there because we're humans why wouldn't we do stupid shit you feel me i mean come on makes sense the rogue experiment uh there wasn't any exact description for this one i'm just assuming this is some random rogue experiment that goes wrong maybe passes a disease around the world or something like that you, your imagination can run wild with this one there was no exact description so anyways moving on to the next one i'm not spending too much time on that this one pretty self-explanatory basically same exact premise as the black hole from the other tier only this one would be man-made there is the place in switzerland the particle accelerator when that first happened there were fears that that could possibly cause a black hole and I know there was a bunch of conspiracies around that at the time, but anyways, that's the main concern. And yeah, not much to say, moving on. Up next is a time paradox. A time paradox is a hypothetical contradiction of cause and effect within a timeline that results from traveling back in time. Basically, it's the bootstrap paradox, which is usually seen in science fiction. When dealing with time travel, it is a closed loop created by time travel in which a person or object is sent back in time, and the resulting timelines unfolds in such a way that results in them having to go back in time again and again. Look, we know how you feel. We didn't believe it either when we were you. If you've ever seen the older Family Guy episode where Stewie comes back to kill himself, him and Brian, and then it's just constantly Stewie's and Brian's showing back up to try to kill themselves and it ends up being like a hundred Stewie's and Brian's. That's exactly what this is. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. We're going to move on. Up next is vacuum decay. To understand vacuum decay, you need to consider the Higgs field that permeates our entire universe. Like an electric field, the Higgs field varies in strength based on its potential. Think of the potential as a track on which a ball is rolling. The higher it is on the track, the higher the kinetic force that the ball has. 
The Higgs potential determines whether the universe is in one or two states, either a true vacuum or a false vacuum. A true vacuum is the stable, lowest energy state, like basically sitting on a valley floor. A false vacuum is being nestled into the divot of a valley wall. A little push and basically it could send you falling off the edge. A universe in a false vacuum state is called metastable because it is not actively decaying or rolling, but it is not exactly stable at the same time. There are two problems with living in a metastable universe. One is that if you create a high enough energy event, you can in theory push a tiny region of the universe from the false vacuum into a true vacuum, creating a bubble of true vacuum that will expand in all directions at the speed of light. Such a bubble would be lethal for us. To know for sure what would happen inside of a bubble of a true vacuum, we need a theory that describes our larger multiverse, but we don't even have that yet. So. In reality, we don't exactly know what would happen if that bubble were to happen, but it can be nothing good. Up next is polar reversal. A geomagnetic reversal is a change in a planet's magnetic field such that positions of magnetic north and magnetic south are interchanged, not to be confused with geographic north and geographic south. The Earth's field has alternated between points of normal polarity in which the predominant direction of the field was the same as the present direction, and the reverse polarity in which it is the opposite. Reversal occurrences are statistically random. There have been at least 183 reversals over the last 83 million years, occurring once every 450,000 years. The latest being the Brunches Mutanya reversal occurred 780,000 years ago. And scientists began exploring the possibility that reversals could actually be linked to extinction events. So they're not sure if it's exactly related, but it could be. Correlation does not equal causation, kids. Remember that. Up next is the singularity. In technology, the singularity describes a hypothetical future where technology's growth is out of control and irreversible. These intelligent and powerful technologies will radically and unpredictably change our reality. The word singularity has many different meanings determining whether you're going through science or mathematics. And for this one, you could think of an AI revolution or the gray goo. Those are all parts of a singularity. The Demiurge arises. The Demiurge is an artisan-like figure responsible for fashioning and maintaining the physical universe. The Gnostics adopted the term Demiurge, and although a fashioner, the Demiurge is not necessarily the creator figure for the monotheistic sense, because the Demiurge itself and the material from which the Demiurge fashions the universe are both considered consequences of something else. Depending on the system, they may be considered either uncreated or eternal or the product of some other entity. Basically, this is like a god under a god is what I would assume it is. It's basically somebody, something made the Demiurge. So they don't believe it is God. They believe something else made it to make the universe. I don't know, weird line of thinking, but I guess I understand it. A real world example could be seen in a small sect of Christianity that adheres to Arianism, named after Arius, a third and fourth century presbyter. This belief system holds that Jesus Christ is not of the same substance as God the Father, but rather a created being who is distinct and subordinate to the Father. Arians believe that God created Jesus and that the universe was created through Christ. From a specific perspective within Arianism, one might tentatively consider Jesus as a demiurge, although this interpretation is highly speculative and would be dismissed by the vast majority of Christians. Arianism is largely considered heretical by mainstream Christianity. A more fitting example of a demiurge can be found in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Celestials, while not creators of the universe, construct reality by creating galaxies, complete with planets and life within them. Before creation itself, there were six singularities. Then the universe exploded into existence. Celestials use energy gathered from host planets to create suns, generating gravity, heat and light for new galaxies to form. The concept of a demiurge bringing about the end of the world is central to the plot of Eternals, where the destruction of Earth is intended to give birth to a celestial. Core malfunction. Not exactly sure, didn't really have any exact meaning. It's gotta do something to do with Earth's core. Maybe it explodes, who knows? Lunar impact. 
If you've watched Moonfall, you understand this. It's the moon literally crashing into Earth. Clearly, it cannot be good. Hell's Invasion. Pretty self-explanatory. If hell is real, the monsters come up and invade Earth and probably kill us all, to be honest. The Happening. If you've ever seen the movie The Happening, it's literally that. Like, I don't know if this is a meme one, but it's basically, if you haven't seen The Happening, it's some weird disease or something that goes around that makes people, you know, kill themselves, you know, or unalive themselves, whatever YouTube wants to call it. That is what The Happening actually is in the movie, and the entry just said The Happening. So I'm assuming it's based off the movie. Ultra Fauna. I'm assuming they're just thinking like megafauna, but even bigger, because megafauna actually had a legit description of what it is. Ultrafauna does not exist to my knowledge, so if you know, let me know down below. Other than that, we're moving on past that. I'm just assuming it's even bigger megafauna. Cthulhu Awakens. In The Call of Cthulhu, H.P. Lovecraft describes a statue of Cthulhu as a monster of vaguely anthropic outline, but with an octopus-like head whose face was the mass of feelers, a scaly rubbery looking body, progeous claws on hind and forefeet, and long narrow wings behind him. Cthulhu is said to resemble a green octopus, a dragon, and a human character, hundreds of meters tall with webbed human looking arms and legs and a pair of rudimentary wings on its back. Its head is depicted as similar to the entity of a gigantic octopus with an unknown number of tentacles surrounding its supposed mouth. Now, I'm sure everybody's seen Cthulhu or some image of what Cthulhu is supposed to be. I've never read any HP Lovecraft or have any idea about any of the actual story. I just know I've seen pictures of this entity a million times. And basically, the concern is he wakes up and basically he fucks up all of us, you know? He, he, he would end the world. He's hundreds of meters tall. He's like, a, he's like the Colossal Titan, bro. Imagine a Colossal Titan with an octopus head and some wings. We are done. Easy money, done tainted atmosphere. A tainted atmosphere is a type of atmosphere known for possessing irritants that make it difficult or impossible for most living things to be able to breathe. And this would basically eventually suffocate us if it went on long enough. Pretty quick and easy, moving on. Next thing is Fantastical Uprising. I have no clue, bro. This has nothing on it. Uh, I'm assuming maybe this is like monsters or the creatures uprise. I have literally no clue. I could not find any information. Nothing pops up when you type this in besides like random books or random like lines where it says a fantastical uprising. So if you know about this, let me know down below. I'm kind of leaning towards this more of like a meme one on here. So Eldridge Invasion. So the only thing that I found on this was from a game called Battle Cats. It says that the Eldridge Forces Invasions is a special stage that appears in a four crown laboratory of relics after clearing the story's legend sub chapters on all crown difficulties. Upon completion, Eldridge Forces will be back to normal and IDI.N will be unlocked. If you have any clue what Battle Cats is, let me know. I'm assuming the IDIN thing is just a character you unlock. But again, nothing else came up for this entry. So that's what I'm going with. If you think it's anything else, let me know down below. Next up is Earth Stop Spinning. If the Earth suddenly stopped spinning, it would be catastrophic. Almost everyone and everything that's not directly attached to the planet would continue to move at a current speed of Earth's rotation, which is around 1,000 miles per hour or 1,600 kilometers per hour. And we would basically just whip, you know what I mean? So realistically, we would all be dead after that. But once the Earth doesn't spin on its own axis, a day lasts as long as a year. Everywhere receives six months of daylight and six months of basically sundown and the average temperature of the planet continuously rises to way over 100 degrees and basically all the rivers are going to start to boil and evaporate and the polar winds basically would be super terrible they'd be like almost like tornado or hurricane level winds and this is all information coming from bbc science um so if you trust the british then i guess there's your information other than that we're moving on to the next one all right so up next is time collapse now the closest thing I found to this is space-time collapse. This is apparently when a large mass is compressed into a small volume and the surrounding area collapses so much that light cannot escape. And it's also known as a black hole, which I kind of already covered on this. But the space-time around a black hole collapses and the laws of classical physics ends up breaking down. It's basically going to be a black hole. I'm pretty sure I already did that entry somewhere on this tier list, so it's basically the same thing. 
hyperintelligent disease. Now, I'm not sure if this one is talking about a disease that would only affect the hyperintelligent beings or whatever they were trying to get at, but this is what I found when I was looking into it. A 27 study published in Intelligence found that people with high IQs are more likely to report certain mental and immune disorders than the general population. This study surveyed 3,715 members of Mensa, which is a society that requires you to be at the top 2% of all IQs in the world. And what this research found is that they have found higher rates of mood disorders such as depression, dyssemia, and bipolar anxiety disorders such as generalized, socialized, and obsessive compulsive attention deficit hyperactive disorder, or ADHD for short, autism spectrum disorder, or ASD, basically just autism, allergies, asthma, and a bunch of other autoimmune disorders. So apparently if you are smarter, your body is literally weaker, your immune system is weaker, or you have more proneness to get these diseases, whatever you want to call them. Um, which kind of sucks because like damn imagine if you're just mad smart and you're just like crazy autistic and can never basically like socially engage with people like that i don't know like i know some people super high functioning and that's chill you know what i mean get to re like regular lives but other than that bro i don't know that sucks you know what i mean but hey whatever moving on to the next one Next up was Infernal Plunge. Now this, the only thing I actually found for this when Googling it, when looking it up, is a card from Magic the Gathering that has the exact same name. And it didn't really explain much of anything. I was gonna say maybe it could be something to do with it, but it literally is like, you send a card to the graveyard, you bring one back, like, I don't know. Couldn't figure anything out. If you know, then let me know down below. Other than that, I could not find anything. Next up is Dimension Shattering. Now, this is just another one that I couldn't find anything for. Everything I was seeing said that although space-time is able to bend, it's not capable of breaking. And I looked at like two or three different research papers that all were saying the same thing. There's technically like no such thing as shattering a dimension. I guess like there was other questions of if we could survive in a two dimension world or whatever, or like four dimensions. I don't know. I, to be real, bro, I'm not really that big of a science guy. You feel me? I, I like talking about random shit. So, hey, if you know, if you can explain it or you could dumb it down for me a little bit, please let me know in the comments. Because this one, like the question just didn't even make sense when I was typing it into Google. Like they were just kind of giving me other options for shit. So anyways, moving on to the next one. Thaumaturgic Revolution. Now, this is another one that was kind of weird. The only thing I found on this was on the turtledove.fandom wiki that states that the thermaturgic revolution was a series of changes that swept the continent of Dervali in the centuries prior to the Six Years' War. The revolution saw the discovery of ley lines and great advances in the realm of theoretical sorcery, and with much of the sorcery used during the Larvian War developed during this time. Due to the revolution, there was less of a need for mass industry, and basically they ended up replacing a lot of it with magic um, a lot of products a lot of textiles a lot of technologies began to basically solely depend on magic the revolution also paved the way for a weapon that destroyed the gornier called the gornier's capstan I, bro i don't know this is like a whole lot of lore for something i have no clue about um, the revolution inspired some other people to rapidly build a new port in the new conquered land of Obuda by magic, apparently. And thermaturgic revolution parallels aspects of our actual industrial revolution in as far as magic made evolutionary leaps in a brief period of time, much as science did in our actual world. I have no clue what the fuck I even just read. I'm going to be 100% with you. I just... This was the only thing that pops up for this. I don't know if this is just some shit that like the guy who created this actual um, iceberg is into or whatever. Bro, I don't know. If you know anything about this turtle dove, I'm assuming that's the name of whatever the story is. Maybe it's novels, maybe it's books. I have no clue. But let me know down below if you know what this is about, because, bro, I'm confused even just rereading what I have down. So, yeah, I'm moving on to the next one. I'm not really worried about it. The only thing I could really get from that is that maybe like if magic starts to take over science and shit in our world, but like, I don't know, bro. I'm not really worried about like a Chris Angel or a David Blaine kind of thing conquering the world. Sorry, you know what I mean? This next one, The Awakening, is another one that I found basically nothing for. The only thing I found was a Korean short film that I can't even explain it, to be honest. I don't know what I was watching. It is subbed. And I'm going to link that down below so you can watch it. I don't think it has anything to do with an end of the world iceberg at all. I couldn't find anything else that popped up. No SCPs, no 
no random stories nothing so i don't know i'm gonna leave it at this random korean film maybe that's what they were getting at maybe not anyways it's so it's weird but if you like that kind of stuff i'm gonna link it down below regardless so moving on to the next one evaporation now if you ever made it past second grade then you should know that evaporation is what happens when liquid turns into a gas the only reason i could see this being on here is like maybe the sun gets so hot that us as humans obviously we got a lot of water in our body we're made up of a lot of h2o whatever and maybe it kind of evaporates the water in our body maybe it evaporates the blood if you guys have seen the three body problem show on netflix they kind of show this not to spoil it slight spoiler warning but they kind of show exactly what this would be like in the show and in my opinion it's not that terrible like i don't know it doesn't look like the craziest way to go you feel me and even then i don't know if it's really an end of the world because they sort of do figure it out in the show at the same time if you haven't checked out that show i would watch it i would say it's sort of black mirror-esque not exact same but very similar vibe type of thing really good quantum non-existence now this one i'm not even sure if this is actually it uh the only thing i could find even related to this is something called quantum non-locality so we're gonna go over that i still don't really think this is what it is but anyways forgive me if i fuck this up because this is a whole lot of science stuff and not the biggest science guy you feel me not bill nye over here in theoretical physics, quantum non-locality refers to the phenomenon by which the measurement statistics of a multi-partite quantum system do not allow interpretation within a local realism. Quantum non-locality has been experimentally verified under a variety of physical assumptions. Any physical theory that aims at superseding or replacing quantum theory should account for such experiments and therefore cannot fulfill local realism. Quantum non-locality is a property of the universe that is independent of our description of nature. Quantum non-locality does not allow for faster than light communication and hence is compatible with a special relativity in its universal speed limit of objects. Thus, quantum theory is local in a strict sense defined by special relativity and as such the term quantum non-locality is sometimes considered a misnomer. Still, it prompts many of the foundational discussions concerning quantum theory. And yeah, I'm gonna be 100%. I still don't really know exactly what I just read, like word for word, but basically it kind of challenges the, um, fuck, I already forgot what I just read, bro. My brain is kind of fried, bro. I just got back from Japan. I had to re-record some of the stuff, so just take it a little bit easy on me, bro. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm already not the smartest guy, but shout out to my editor, Revan, for letting me know. If not, I wouldn't have even added these in, to be real with you. Uh, happy late birthday to him. He's the guy. And yeah. Up next is a memetic pandemic. This is another one. There's a few on this list that I literally could not find anything for. This one, the only thing that popped up with was um, a random album on Bandcamp. So I have no clue. After continued searching, we still could not find any information on a memetic pandemic. So we asked the AI gods. ChatGPT4 said that a mimetic pandemic is the widespread spread of ideas, behaviors, styles, or cultural practices via memes across large populations, often facilitated by social media and other online platforms. The term mimetic comes from meme, and pandemic is of course referencing the spread of a disease across a vast geographic area, affecting a large proportion of the population. We prompted GPT4 for this question over 10 times, and it gave the same answer each time, so I am taking this as the proper meaning of the tier list entry. But it is AI after all, so take it with a grain of salt. Now, how on earth viral memes can bring about the end of the world? I have no fucking idea. Ask a paranoid politician about the apocalyptic implications of disinformation. And this, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our, our democracy. democracy. Necro Society. Necropolitics is a socio-political theory of the use of social and political power to dictate on how some people may live and how some people must die. Necropolitics is often discussed as an extension of biopower, the full Chaldean term of the use of social and political power to control people's lives. Basically, these people would be able to choose which people die, which people live, and we obviously do not want a society like that. So I'm not really sure how that would end the world, but it was on the fucking iceberg, so we did it anyways. 
Up next is The Flesh That Hates. This concept is actually based on an SCP, SCP-610 to be exact, which says that SCP-610 appears to be a contagious skin disease at first with symptoms including a rash, itching, and increased skin sensitivity. Within three hours, the disease will cause blemishes resembling heavy scar tissue to form in the chest and arm areas, spreading to the legs and back within an additional hour, consuming the victim completely within five hours. Exposure to higher temperatures vastly decreases the time for the contagion to end up spreading and has been recorded in occurring as, as little as five minutes. After the completion of the infection incurs, the victim's life functions will cease for approximately three minutes, after which time they will restart at two to three times the activity of a normal human. Following this, the scar tissue on the victims will start to move of its own accord and grow at a rapid rate. Normal human features start to disappear at this point under the infection and the path to mutation appears to be largely random. Subjects observed in this stage of infection have been recorded as growing three or more limbs of a type such as arms or legs. The head may become misshapen or elongated or even widen out. Parts of the subject may split open from which additional branches of flesh will end up growing. The duration of this stage in infection is unknown and not all subjects appear to progress to the later stages. Under unknown conditions, an infected individual will cease moving and place itself in a location it deems suitable where it then roots itself to the floor and basically begins to expand. This is an entire story. It's an SCP. I'll link it down below if you're interested, but we're moving on to the next one. When Day Breaks. This is another SCP. This concept was originally written for the SCP-3000 contest and is not an original SCP Foundation original. But it says at the end of the world, the sun ends up transforming and kills all living things to melt like wax, but you stay alive. It was a pretty stupid one, but it was on the iceberg nonetheless, so I left it there. Pretty dumb, but anyways, moving on. Up next is Forbidden Knowledge. Forbidden Knowledge, which is different from Secret Knowledge, is used to describe forbidden books or other information to which access is restricted or depreciated for political or religious reasons. Forbidden Knowledge is commonly not secret, rather a society or various institutions will use repressive mechanisms to either completely prevent the publication of information they find either objectionable or dangerous or failing that to try to reduce the public's trust in such information, which is propaganda. Public repression can create paradoxical situations where the prescribed information is generally common knowledge, but publicly citing it is actually disallowed. And people's thoughts on this is basically that some religion has some forbidden knowledge about what will happen at the end of the world or whatever. Up next is absolute sterilization. There was no exact definition for this, but I'm assuming this is just all organisms on earth becoming sterile and no longer being able to reproduce, which means we all die out eventually. So that's what I think. Let me know if you think something different. Up next is metaphysical collapse. This is another one I just could not find any information on. I'm just assuming that this is has to do with like a person's soul or consciousness. And imagine like being in a coma, your body is still there, but inside you're like not really there. You know what I mean? Or your soul dies, your body's still fine. There wasn't much information on that, but this is the end of tier four. We're now moving on to tier five. Death of information. Information theoretic death is a term used to define death in a way that is permanent and independent of any future advances, no matter how distant or improbable that may be. Basically, this is just like, imagine if nobody knew what they were doing anymore, all the information that we had on medical advancements and, and everything just disappeared and we're basically back to ground zero again. We would very quickly die off as a species. <laughs> Thank God that we have all this medicine and basically all these technologies we do at this point, because hey, they save a ton of lives every year, every day. So anyways, that was that one. Moving on. Time entanglement. This is basically our timeline gets crossed with maybe a multiverses timeline or another timeline and basically rewrites history, gets everything all fucked up. We kind of already covered this in an earlier tier with the time travel stuff. So basically same exact idea, but with two of our uh, timelines. Grandma Apocalypse. I'm 100% sure this is like a meme one on here, but anyways, this concept comes from a cookie clicker game, basically an automated game, and it is an in-game event, uh, which after reaching a certain level, just spawns in a ton of random grandmas and cookies that over the levels and over time you're playing, they become more demonic looking, 
um, showing their true forms. I'm not 100% sure what the fuck this is supposed to mean. I don't think a cookie cutter game is going to end our world, but I covered it anyways because it was on here. So anyways, moving on to the next one. The end. This is another one, bro. You type in the end on Google or any researching site. You're getting a million things, you know? Um, best thing I could do is this is from Minecraft, which is the end. It's a space-like dimension consisting of separate islands in the void. Um, and basically, this is where you go to fight the Ender Dragon. Not sure what whoever made this iceberg is thinking. Maybe he thinks the Ender Dragon is going to come into our world or something. I'm not 100% sure. New Spheric Contamination. The New Sphere is a term used to describe how humans' consciousness and mental activities have actually influence on the biosphere, including its relation to planetary evolution. Basically, the word's origin is associated with the thoughts of a few seminal thinkers of the early 20th century, including philosopher Edward Leroy, who coined the term, pioneer geochemist Vladimir Verdansky, and paleontologist and theologian Pierre Chardin. For each of them, the Noon Sphere is a way to describe the evolutionary stage that we have arrived at in which the human capacity for thought has become a determinant factor in the development of our planet. Basically, since we're able to think so highly and we're able to change the planet so much, you know, we terraform, we, we do a million things to our planet every single day. Um, this is basically that we could end up messing up the planet for ourselves or if we end up losing that ability, that mental ability to basically help the planet, you know, either way, we're kind of getting fucked on that one. So, liminal gateways. Liminal space is the uncertain transition between where you've been and where you're going, whether physically, emotionally, or metaphorically. To be in a liminal space means to be on the precipice of something new, but not quite there yet. The word liminal comes from the Latin word limen, which means threshold. Imagine getting stuck in the back rooms forever. That's basically the way I would do this. All right, if you're in the back rooms, we've probably all heard of the back rooms at this point, and then just getting stuck there. That's that's it. That's what the liminal gateway is. You know, you step into that and you're trapped. Up next is retrocausal erasure. Best way I can describe this is you go back in time and you change an event and it changes the future. Think of Back to the Future if you've ever seen that movie when Marty goes back and he meets his mother, which makes his mother kind of fall in love with him. And then in his present or his future, I guess, he's kind of starting to disappear and erase because that never happened. That's that's the way to fucking think about this. All right. I just tried to read this like seven times and I messed up. So I'm moving on to the next one. But hopefully you understood that. Up next is Firmament Failure. In biblical cosmology, the firmament is the vast solid dome created by God during the Genesis creation narrative to divide the primal sea into upper and lower portions so that dry land could appear. Basically, it's like the atmosphere and if that fails, I don't know. I don't believe in the firmament, so I'm gonna just move on. But if you believe in it, I guess some, ma some bad stuff's gonna happen, you know what I mean? So anyways, the reverse rapture. Again, I could not find any information on this. I'm assuming it's basically the opposite of the rapture or maybe the people from hell. It would basically be like hell invasion where people from hell come up again. I'm not 100% sure. If you've ever heard of the reverse rapture, let me know down below. Other than that, I'm moving on to the next one. The final dogma. This I didn't really understand. It's something to do with Christianity and Mary and Jesus. Uh, I did research this for a while, but honestly, I just was not understanding what they were trying to get at. To understand the final dogma, it's essential to grasp some church history. The final dogma is the fifth dogma of Mariology, the study of Mary, the mother of Jesus. The final dogma designates Mary as a mediatrix, advocating for graces between God and humanity, making her a co-redemptrix with Jesus. Pope John Paul II frequently supported this idea. This dogma elevates Mary alongside Jesus. Now, as to how this is the end of the world, there is no clear documentation. But personally, I believe that under the Mediatrix ideology, Mary could theoretically retract the grace and redemption bestowed through her by Jesus, thus thrusting the world into permanent damnation. However, this is purely my interpretation divine decay again this is just another one i could not find any exact information on or any description or definition i'm assuming this is maybe religion itself decaying and dying after a certain point 
uh, but that's just my guess. A lot of these last ones are just super religious stuff and I'm not so sure exactly what it is. So if you have any idea with a couple of these, please let me know down below. I'm open. I love taking in information, even if I don't necessarily believe in it. But hey, listen, I'll listen to everything. So Tulpa Invasion. R slash Tulpas describes a Tulpa as this. A Tulpa is a mental companion created by focused thought and recurrent interaction. Similar to an imaginary friend, however, unlike them, Tulpas possess their own will, thoughts, and emotions, allowing them to act independently. So like any normal person, I was also thinking this has got to be schizophrenia or something like that, but they actually address this question. They say, not at all. Schizophrenia and DID are disorders characterized by clinically significant distress, dysfunction, or danger. Schizophrenia is a breakdown in perception of physical reality and consistency that has strong genetic influences and does not always involve hearing voices. DID is a dissociative disorder typically caused by childhood trauma. Now, neither disorder is self-inflicted, and we recognize them as very different experiences from tulpa creation. The experience of having tulpas is much more accurately likened to the experiences of fiction writers whose characters come alive and begin talking to them. In fact, a great number of tulpa creators have actually created tulpas this way. Um, and that's just how tulpas are defined. So they're basically an imaginary friend that can think, act, and has its own emotions. All right, so it's basically its own person, but it is an imaginary friend. Uh, I guess that could be kind of terrifying. I'm picturing Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, if you're familiar with that. That's kind of what I'm a, like. I'm picturing for a Tulpa's invasion. I don't think it would be that bad, depending on whose Tulpa's it is. You know, if it's somebody that's super fucked up, hey, you're going to have some crazy stuff coming out. But if you get a dude like Cheese or Blue, like... Yo, you're lit, bro. I would love to have a little cheese running around me. That would be fire. But anyways, moving on to the next one. Up next on the iceberg is Unhinged Realms. I have no clue what this is supposed to be. Maybe a different realm of reality. I have no idea. But if you got any idea, let me know down below. I'm just going to pass over that one because the next one is a long one and it is very weird. This could probably be a 45 minute video in itself just explaining what this thing is. But let's get to it. Up next is Philosophical Zombie Apocalypse. Now, I'm not sure how to really describe this one, so I'm actually just going to read the first couple paragraphs off of Hub City to give you some idea of what it is. Imagine sitting down to play a video game called Philosophical Zombie Apocalypse that, aside from the title, you know nothing about. Upon booting it up, you summarize that it's a first-person perspective survival game set in an open world with sandbox-style gameplay. What is not immediately obvious, though, is whether or not it's a single-player or a multiplayer game. There are other characters with avatars similar to your own, and they claim to be other players, but you are aware of the trend of methodological design in vogue at the moment, which are games about games, breaking the first wall, all that stuff. And as such, are aware of the distinct possibility that the developers might have programmed some or all of the characters other than your own to behave as indistinguishly as possible from a real player. You summarize four distinct possibilities. We're about to go through the possibilities right now. So possibility number one, this is a single player game. You are the only player and all other player characters are NPCs pre-programmed to behave the way they do and react to the events of the game of the world, including those instigated by you, the player, either according to the logic script or according to a random number generator or a mix of both. The second possibility. This is a massively multiplayer game populated by entirely other players. There are no NPCs whatsoever, not even as quest givers. Behind every avatar is a person sitting at his computer monitor, seeing the events on screen, hearing the audio out of his speakers and entering commands through a keyboard or a controller. Number three, this is a multiplayer game partially populated by players and partially populated by bots or NPCs programmed to behave like other players. The sophistication in which the bots are programmed makes it virtually impossible according to all other conceivable Turing tests to discriminate them from real players. You do not know nor can you reliably guess which players are bots and which players are players. And number four, this is not a game at all but rather a movie made from computer generated images that only appears to be a game. The inputs you attempt to deliver through your mouse or keyboard actually have no effect on the events on screen, or alternatively, you're in spectator mode, seeing the game play out through what the perspective of an NPC would be. 
Either possibility would be functionally equivalent, basically be the same thing. And the fourth possibility is true, the knowing such is absolutely inconsequential insofar the knowledge can have no impact whatsoever over the events on screen or the outcome of the game. The character through whose perspective you're witnessing events on screen will behave as he will no matter how much you pound on the keyboard or scream into your headset. And yeah, it's it's a whole mouthful. Honestly, I don't know how to describe it. It's more of like an idea, but I'll link the entire thing on Hub City below so you can read through it yourself. Um, and yeah, moving on to the next one. The next two, I again, could not find any information for. Next up is mathematical failure scenario. If you have any idea what that is, please let me know. I could not find anything. And the next one is those which are not. Again, nothing pops up for you, so I'm just moving on. If you know anything about these, let me know down below. But yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on stuff that I have no clue about. So moving on to the next one. The Giants Awaken. This is basically if giants are real, that they are sleeping. And basically, we don't know what will happen when they wake up. They'll probably see us as we see bugs and squash us is my idea. Personally, I think giants are real. I guess it depends on what you would call a giant at the end of the day. But yeah, I think that's a possibility. I don't know if they would awaken. I mean, I would just assume they went extinct at this point or got killed off or whatever happens. But anyways, moving on to the next one. And God's fury hath no end. Bro, it just sounds like a Bible verse to me. Like you look this up, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't say anything just brings up Bible verses. So I don't know. I feel like I kind of got cheated on this final tier because a lot of them just don't have any definitions or real like explanations of what they are. So I don't know. That's kind of my only beef with whoever made this iceberg. I still appreciate it because it was a dope idea. But future reference, I just feel like the last tier should be stuffed with at least some type of information on it. You know what I mean? All right. So here we are. We're at the final entry of this entire iceberg. Like I said, I kind of feel like we got cheated a little bit on this final tier, this final depths tier. Uh, just a bunch of them just did not have information, bro. So if you have any idea, please let me know down below. I will make a separate video and I'll fill those ones in just in case. But for the very last entry, we have simulation takeover. Now, again, this one had no real information on it. So I'm just going to give my idea. Um, my idea of a simulation takeover is, like I said, if we are in a simulation, if this is a simulation, I mean, first off, you got to think who put us here, why, and then the takeover part. The takeover part could be the scariest part because we're already living, you know, we're already doing our thing. So if this is a simulation, I'm chill with that. Now, if it gets taken over, that could mean a bunch of different things. Maybe somebody comes into our actual universe, like our planet takes it over. Maybe whoever is running our simulation outside of our seeable universe or whatever gets taken over. I feel like this just has a bunch of possibilities and none of them end well at all. Could be scared to think about. Personally, I don't think that deep about stuff like that. I don't really care. Hey, it is what it is and it's not what it's not. So that's all you got from me. That was the entire end of the world iceberg. If you want to check it out for yourself, I'll post the original link if I can find it. Uh, I think I still got it. But yeah, other than that, man, let me know what you think. Let me know if any of these sound OK. Let me know if these sound fucking horrible. Let me know if you're terrified now, if you don't want to, you know, what I mean, even think about this ever again. But other than that, um, yeah, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. If you hate it, let me know. If you hate me, let me know. If you love me, let me know. And other than that, man, maybe a new iceberg soon. Let me know if you like the entire iceberg just in one video or if you like it how I was doing it before, just breaking it down into separate episodes. I kind of feel like that makes it a little bit easier. But anyways, we're trying this out. Uh, if you stuck around this long, I appreciate you. I love you. Hope you get laid. I don't know how long this has been going on. My thing says like an hour or something. So we'll see how long this ends up being. But anyway, get laid. I'll catch y'all later. This.